Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Geomologist Presents. We are going to start recording our Twilight 2000 ongoing play sessions. We've been playing for about two and a half years. We've had some people who've been there since the beginning, some people who joined, who have joined later, and we also have a new player today. There have been people that have left, things have turned over, as you know, for a long-term game. But uh, I will have each player introduce themselves and give a short short uh, introduction to who their character is and then i will say what happened last time and then we'll get into it so first i'm going to go from left to right here we have amy playing kasha and diaz apparently mm -hmm. i am kasha kasha none of your business and it's none of your business what i do all right next we have rupert Played by Hi. Vince. Uh, Rupert has uh, been just a combat engineer and helping him out with a, a little group of a vehicle commander. Okay. All right. And we have next is Gabe. Um, hi, um, Gabriel. I'm playing private first class Bronson. He's a, he's a gunner. He likes... Uh, he likes heavy weapons and blow things up. Nice. Yeah, he got to blow something up last time. We'll get into that. And then finally, we have our new player, Cindy, who plays Aldona. Hello. So Aldona tends to be a spook. And she has no issues with killing. She just prefers to do it from a distance. Great. Okay, so we have been playing for the last two and a half years, sort of the what I call the tetralogy of adventures that were implemented after the Battle of Kalitz. Uh, You're on your own is like the first introductory adventure in Twilight 2000 in the classic first edition. And they've redone it for the fourth edition of the game. And uh, we've been running through the original first edition tetralogy that take place in Poland. And those are the Free City of Krakow, Pirates of the Vistula, Black Madonna, and Ruins of Warsaw. So technically Black Madonna is number four, but we already ran and finished that. So uh, we're now in the ruins of Warsaw and the players have been marching closer and closer to Warsaw at the climax of Pirates of the Vistula. They destroyed one of Baron Zarni, the Black Baron who wants control of Warsaw. They destroyed his presence on the river. Uh, this person called the Admiral because no one uses their first name. They always got nicknames. The Admiral and his flotilla was annihilated by the Free Krakow Coalition, who these players have formed as a group out of Krakow consisting of uh, survivors, really. And it's I think it's what's cool is that it's um, it's not only Americans, that's sort of the default, or that was the default back in Twilight 2000 first edition, but there are also uh, Polish uh, people of Polish uh, citizenship or descent. And also we have uh, Germans, also German Germany being part of NATO and uh, involved in the conflicts so when we were in the last session the group planned and took an airfield and they took this airfield as a quote-unquote favor to this guy here a captain volkov also known as the executioner and he had tried to get this airfield he wants the airfield so he can repair his uh mi-24 hind d uh, it is not the hind is not on the map. The hind is about two kilometers away in this town called uh, Allied town called Minsk Makove Makoveki, Mako, something like that. And um, yeah, so but he uh, he did kind of help at the end to wrap things up. As you can see by all the X's on the map, there was a lot of carnage and destruction. None of the Free Krakow coalition or any of Volk Volkov's men were killed in the conflict. But lots of um, lots of these marauders who the group learned they work for the Black Baron. They had taken this airfield as sort of a way to get behind uh, the town of Minsk. Who knows what they're, they're going to do with the airfield. They probably were going to send all the supplies and ammo and all that kind of good stuff back to the Black Baron. But the player characters acted quickly on the intel they had and took the airfield with no loss of people. They also took a tank which is awesome. Like I mentioned, uh, Gabriel as Bronson got to roll and blow up 
a BTR last time with the AP, APSF, whatever. The armor piercing super duper rounds uh, that, right. Who soon our helicopter. Oh, I see. Already having stuff uh, thrown out here. So um, anyway, the BTR was destroyed. There is an engagement here between Vince's character and the sponsor pon sponsor Spa Panzer looks is a German IFV and this BTR. He was able to neutralize it. Um, one guy eventually climbed out of it, but his the other crewmen, because these guys were short. Uh, as you can see, they have been depleted. Volkov did attack him before and took out a few of them, but they took out a lot of his men too. So uh, he hired the Free Kraka Coalition uh, over over McDonald's uh, Happy Meals, I guess. So uh, anyway. You can go back and listen to the Gemologist Presents podcast. I do have lots of recaps uh, consistently of the Twilight 2000 game. But now we're going to do actual play, so you, you really don't have to... Well, you can still listen to the podcast, but I think what's cool is I'll go here for games and actual play, put them on the YouTube, and then the podcast will be more, you know, game theory, you know, how what happened, how it went, that type of thing. More game discussion as opposed to just straight out recap. So at the end of the conference... Did I miss anything? Guys, uh, no. Basically, that was all, I guess. Sounds about right. Okay. It sounds right. All right. So, um, right. So, at the end of the conflict, the a lot of these guys surrendered. You can see there looks like there's what five, ten, six, eleven um, prisoners maybe 12 or so prisoners um, that were captured and taken. A lot of ordnance, uh, ammo, that kind of stuff, guns uh, were captured. We haven't kind of quite gone over that yet. Um, but then the Volkov rolled up. He killed the two sentries. He opened fire with his BTR, um, killed the two sentries here at the gate. And then when these guys ran out, these guys here, uh, ran out he gunned them down but you know um i kind of was going to use that as sort of a this guy is pretty brutal but you know if we do rules as written well what happened is i rolled for him and um three of these guys were hit and damaged severely uh one has a got shot in the head or neck and he it's a leap lethal wound one guy got hit in the arm one guy got shot in the chest and two guys are still alive kind of trying to duck and huddle um from what presumably that volkov was going to come and uh and try to finish him off or something so uh that's where we pick up the action i believe so uh who what you guys um well definitely let's see who sees this um all, all everyone kind of flinches everyone kind of flinches when the btr opens fire right uh, I guess the tank is way back here. Uh, the spa Panzer looks. You can look over there, and you see you can kind of see. I guess Rupert, what's going on here? Uh, yeah, you can kind of see what's going on. You can see him open fire. We saw these guys run out of the buildings, and then you know, this guy opened fire, and then. So I you guess know, the, the Marines saw everything. Yeah, the Marines see everything too, and Grunt sees it um, as well. Um, and actually, Grunts has a yeah. Grunts does have a beat. Oops. Grunts does have a bead on Volkov. He's you know he's out. He's out. You know you open the hatch and is like you know, ordering ordering fire from his BTR. The other BTR doesn't fire, but uh, that's what's going on there. All right. Um, so I don't know if we, I'll just, and then uh, probably I'll, I'll don't know. We don't have, where's your, where's your wonderful token? I guess. <clears throat> yep. There you go. Well, uh, at some point I'll have to go through and consistently, um, audit these tokens some are made you can see kind of like squad leader or chips and stuff like that and some are just pictures of people 
um, oh, just to let people know, um, stress is in, what's your max damage that you can take, Cindy, for Aldona? Do I find that again? The, your damage? It's a damage uh, track. Five. five. And then stress is also five, I believe. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I have on the character sheets, if you can see them. Um, I don't know. I probably, nope. Let me adjust that for everyone. Yeah, by default, rule 20, you can't see the tracker unless you can edit the... Um, Right, so here I have, up here, I have um, stress and damage being tracked. Uh, you'll see damage is in green, stress is in blue. So and other people have them, but I have to, I'm going to have to adjust now. Everyone probably I will adjust as they come up. Although I don't know why, huh. All right. For some reason, Kasha is, is different. Probably the other ones are different too, but I'll be try to be consistent, <laughs> right? Yeah, I did just notice since since Vince is sharing his screen that uh, you know no one can see what we're talking about. It is none of their business either. Uh huh. But it's good for people to know what how people are doing. Okay. So um, I'll just go, so I'll guess I'll donate you with this Silyesh militia that have come along uh, to help out, but they didn't really see any action this time around. Uh, it was, everything was mopped up very quickly. There's another group of partisans down here at the bottom that come from Minsk Makoviki. And we have some more, like if you, if you scroll, pan out or scroll down, like we have uh, people over here too. Um, down here, uh, another couple of vehicles that were coming up to the scene. So, but um, yeah, they they weren't. I mean, I guess the M113 saw some action, but um, but the BMP didn't shoot. I guess they were kind of concerned that they would hit some Polish uh, army Ormo um, allies here. So, okay. So the Volkov has just opened fire. We'll just go. We don't. I, I don't really need to do initiative, but we'll just go down the list and see who wants to do what. So, Kasha, you definitely see this, right? You and you and Florian are up top, right, on this building, two-story right. building. You and huh? Yes, so we are on there. So, what do you want to do? I need to run down. There are people injured. All right, so... and I need to on radio tell Kylie get up your help and. To tell Grancy, no more shooting. I do not wish to be shot. Okay, so you go ahead and make roll mobility. You get two, <coughs> excuse me, two moves, and then if you make your mobility, you can move further. All right, so you get three. So you can move your token three in that direction. I have to one moment. Right to here at 30 meters up to here, I guess. Slide down the ladder and she will not stay in that little box. But she's in that box. Yeah. Yeah. So you might have to use alt um to make sure you go in the box uh, if you need to. Uh all right. So Aldona, are you gonna do anything? I think for right now, I'm just going to hang back and see if anybody needs me. They can flag me down. Okay. Well, I guess that your your fellow militia guys, they're going to like move to hunker down behind this building here because of someone's opening, still firing down the line there. Bullets are probably like bouncing off the pavement. All right. Uh, Rupert. Vince, what would you like Rupert to do with the spa panzer? I had pushed the top, but it didn't work. So Rupert's going to go on the shortwave radio and mm -hmm. basically say, "What's going on? You know, why why was there open firing?" Yeah, you could you could well you saw well you saw these guys go out there and you hear like the gunfire and 
shoot. Okay, but you want confirmation? I want uh, confirmation because remember we just had some surrender. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um I'll go down to these guys. Uh well, Kylie uh strongly suggests that they move up. They're going to move up. I'm going to roll for, I think poor Liam is the one who's driving. So he's a see. bad driver. He's not a great driver, but we'll see. What did he get? Uh, yep, he moves that much. Okay. I believe, yeah, three, uh, combat speed is three for three uh, off terrain, four for, okay. <clears throat> Uh, funny. All right. Um, what would you like Diaz and the BMP two to do with the rest of the militia? Uh, Diaz will start heading up and start collecting prisoners. All right. So she's gonna. So go ahead and roll driving for Diaz. This way. That's a prisoner there. Oh, nice. So I will move the BMP and all these people forward. All right, so the the BMP is got on these is on these guys too, and probably the Siliash militia will come out to assist while Anna Anna stays on the gun. Diaz is driving. All right, um, uh, Ronson, your vehicle. What do you want your vehicle to do? You're in charge oh. of the vehicle now. You've been promoted to you've been promoted to sergeant. You're in charge of the vehicle. So. Um... He probably uh, motion uh, the Minsk uh, militia to move forward and secure, uh, help secure these prisoners. Okay. While we are like uh, covering from the from the tank, yeah. And he probably yells at Diaz like, "You saw how it blew up." <laughs> Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yep. <laughs> it's probably like you shot the BTR with the the armor piercing round, and it just put a hole in the front, hole at the back, and then just missed a red mist, you know, because those guys inside are gone. It's more than likely, it's a little overkill. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see. Are uh, Tasha, are you yelling or anything? Um, I guess these these Marines are going to. Yes, she will be telling them, "Do not touch those bodies. Go, walk off, and sit down. Get away from gun." Sure she will know. wag finger at him, but he's probably not listening. Yeah, I'm moving these guys, these prisoners over because that's where they kind of are. So green north with web on Overwatch secure, and she's on the RPK. Uh, she does have a prisoner also up here. Web does. All right, and um, yeah. Do you want grunts to do anything? Anyone? No, I do not want him to shoot. Okay. All right. So Kasha, you can answer Rupert. Because he says what's going on. Volkov, think he helped and he shoot people. He does not understand. I deal with him later. I need to get to injured people. I want to see if Volkov hears you or pretends not to hear you. Oh, actually, since you're yelling, go ahead and give me persuade. Oh, okay. Well, wow. he is, um, he stops. That's better. He, he probably yells back, they killed my men. Um, grunts, which we will talk about it in off, a minute. Come through the gate. You gotta go Does up to them. Does she need to roll her movement again? Uh, yeah, if you want to get there, you can roll your movement. He's kind of gotten up, gotten out of the BTR, 
guess he'd technically be here. Approaching them, he's got his AK-74. Okay, uh, so three, you can move three. Uh, so you can, you can actually move into this group. You see there's two of them that are huddled down, um, and they're probably going to, like, oops. They're probably going to, um, loop. She will tell them to remain calm and slow breathing. We'll get to them ASAP. Okay, the guys who, like, were, who survived, they're, like, uh, going to crawl. Like, one's going to crawl behind this. You know, I like kind of do that elbow crawl as fast as he can. Um, and then this guy's going to crawl the other way as fast as he can. So they're uh, not quite out of harm's way. You see Volkov, the, well, these two guys are, were dead anyway. Um, they got lit up, but they were, that was during the combat. Um, and then here, when you get there, Kasha, you see that um, it looks like there's a guy who's shot in the head or neck, one guy who's shot in the arm who's out unconscious but not lethal, and then a guy who's got a bleeding, ventilating chest wound. So I don't know. She would start approach. with chest wound. Okay. The chest wound? Yes. Because triage would tell her he's most important. Head wound most likely going to die. So all she can do is maybe stabilize. So do you want to who do you want to treat then? When you get there. Because you can always move and then do something, right? So Yes. Who is more critical? Uh the neck wound. I mean, the chest and neck wound are lethal. Um, the neck wound is a is neck head wound is bleeding pretty badly then we start with that one okay you need medical right yep okay medical oh we got three successes okay so he comes to and that goes from lethal. So it goes from lethal shift to let's see how does there's a weird rule about this damage. Okay, suffering damage, affected wounds. Okay, stabilizing crits to stabilize a critical lethal critical injury. One or more Medicaid drill must be made. Medical equipment can give you a bonus. If you are not in capacity, you can attempt to administer medical aid yourself, minus two. It takes the same amount of time to perform as the time limit of your injury, i.e. one round stretch or shift. So it's a stretch. So, okay. So you're going to be there for a little bit. A stretch is like five, 10 minutes. Yes. Yep. Okay. But you are you do succeed. You're able to stabilize him. The arm you realize is not going to be lethal. Um, but this guy with the shift, the stretch shift. Well, that's the problem. Um, yeah. So you get him from you get the head from lethal stretch to lethal shift. So the chest wound is like um, so like here's the way roll. the roll succeeds. The time limit is increased one carat category from round to stretch. From stretch to shift. And then when you treat a shift and how then can you do this? Oh wow. That's interesting. So the same the medical aid role takes the same amount of time to perform as the time limit of your critical injury. I one round stretch or shift. Okay. The role succeeds, the time limit of your crit is increased one category from round to stretch, from stress to shift. When a crit with a time limit of a shift is successfully treated, he's no longer at risk of dying, but it takes a shift clearly to to do that. So you're going to be during their shifts, they're going to be trying to treat these two guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So this guy, uh, the neck, the, I'll move the arm guy out, and he's not dead anyway. He's just a prisoner. 
Can Sam treat him? Yeah, I mean, well, Kylie's going to come up and she can treat him. Just takes a shift, yeah. right, to treat him. And you can work on um, this guy here. The guy, the neck wound guy is going is now at a uh, stretch, and then the chest wound guy is still a, he's, he needs treatment. Um. So, all right. Well, I mean, we don't have to unless anyone's going to do anything. We can move forward because now Amy's character, and then Kylie is going to, you know be driving up there that's what they're going to do they're going to drive up as quickly as possible and then um put the spotlight on and then kylie's going to treat to try to stabilize this guy but that's going to take the whole rest of the shift and then akasha is going to take the whole rest of the shift to stabilize the neck wound guy so you need me to roll for kylie uh you can roll for kylie i don't know if you have permission i do not know we find out I do not know where Kylie is. I can roll. I'm there. What did you get? She did not. She got five and a two. Can she push? She'll push it. Oh, she did get it. Okay. The That's first one. much better. Yep. Okay. And then you need to make another roll for that net guy. And then you're stuck there for the rest of the, sh for the shift. Wow, okay. That guy's going to live. Gashi will ask Volkov to hand her band-aids and stuff. He must help because he caused problem. But Volkov is just watching you. It's like, why are you saving these people? Who cares? You're probably going to execute him anyway, right? No. They were yes. conscripted into this army like you and I were conscripted. Vengeance yep. is never a reason to shoot an unarmed person. They did not shoot at you today. Yeah, but they shot at me and mine last time. Killed some of my people. And I understand. I had my family killed in front of me to try and prove point. But best way to prove point back to them is to show them mercy. You right. better person than this. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, you did get three successes on your persuade, so we don't need to roll again. But Volkov stands down <clears throat> and just kind of he's contemplating what's next. So, all right. So, what is the what are the rest of you guys going to do? You guys have got it. The shift activity for the morning or the rest of the shift is going to be uh, the night shift is going to be consolidating everything right mm -hmm. um yeah, start sec securing the prisoners disarm them take them yeah well a lot of them like a lot of them they don't they don't even have you know they don't even have their weapons up <laughs> you know Does anyone else with medical want to try to save one of these people? Sam? <clears throat> Sam's back in Minsk, Masoviki. So someone has to call and radio them to bring, come forward. Yeah. Bring ambulance. But these guys are dead. All right, well, someone else has to do that because Kasha's busy. Florian can go. OK, but so give me. Not have tech. No, give, he me, does. give me a tech roll for Florian. And Florian's just like watching, making sure things are on the up and up, staring, mm -hmm. staring at Volkov for that thousand yard stare. Okay. <laughs> so um, by the end of the shift, the rest of the group should be coming up because Sam will, Sam and Hicks will bring up the, uh, the gas. And do you want that? So Sam comes back, whoever Florian talks to, and uh, says, Do you want everything yes bren will tell him everything bring it all so the howitzer and everything right 
Yes, and the horses. There's fun stuff for them to chew on. <laughs> okay. All right. So they will probably be here like mid mid morning shift because I got to get everything ready. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Um, Diaz. All right. Diaz so, has some medical. Yeah, I don't know what he, you might want to have them do other things. I mean, then we'll go. We have to go through and see who's lethal or not lethal because there's a lot of people mm -hmm. that potentially could be. Oh yeah, oh, man, they they did that. The way they the roll twenty, I guess that that was the former beta. These guys are down here too. <laughs> And then, oh yeah, this guy here. They tease me about strays, but look at how many strays we have now. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of dead folks. Okay. Um. So, Gabe, what do you want to do during the shift? The rest of the shift. Um, we can, we can take some, we can take those AGS and yeah, he, yeah, he's, you want to, he's concerned about ammo for the, for the BMP and the, and the, and the T-50-72 now. Yeah. So the T-72, as you check the numbers and Cigna helps you to read the Russian numbers, although I guess numbers and numbers. So the T-72 has uh, eight HE, uh, five, it was formerly six APF SDS, six heat rounds. And then the uh, coaxial um, that's there has 330 rounds in it. So the coaxial's the fine. It's a 762? Uh, the coaxial for the BMP for the T-72? I will look it up for you. I'm sure I I looked it up, but now I don't remember. Like so there was... like Cindy said earlier, there's a lot going on in this game. It's just a little. So Soviet vehicles. That's not a Soviet vehicle, right? T seventy two. Um, it said. Oh wow! Okay. Oh. Yeah, seventy. Yeah, the hubs. It's that's a one twenty-five, and it's a PKM, and an the, NSB. The PKM outside. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pintle mount is the NSB, and then the uh, PKM. It has a PKM round, so PKM. So um, so I guess it has, option to buy that three thirty. By what we got there, so NS, as I think NSV is twelve point is like a fifty cal, like at twelve point seven. Mm -hmm. it's 12 so, seven. Yep. And then the the PKM right general purpose, yeah, seven six two the G uh, so and then the NSV. is a. 50 cal, well, 12.7, 50 cal. All right, uh, magazine 50 and PKM 100. So let's say that um, they're efficient. 100, something like that. Yeah, so probably 200. I'm going to change it in here. So 200, uh, 7.62. Right. Um, and then what was it? 130 for the NSVT 12.7. Yeah, so put that on the I have a handout, I don't think I've shared it with oh. you guys. Goodness. Um, let's see. 
Oh, airfield assets. Five, five heat. Okay. Yep. So here's the airfield asset assets. I'm showing it to everyone. Can you see that? I guess this. Mm -hmm. You can close it if you want. Oh, it has a lot of other spoiler stuff so far, but uh, that's what you find on the tank. Um, so, all right. Well, that doesn't take that doesn't take long to assess that. I guess if you want to go and collect all the AGS stuff, um, you can. You and Diaz can. You want you and Diaz to do that or? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, the AGS for the armor for the. Okay. All right. So, like with the uh, in the hangar, in that combined with the hangar, um, yeah. You know, I can. Well, let's go through the what people want to do for the shift, <clears throat> the rest of the shift. But yeah, so you can collect that. You can have uh, you and Ronson and Diaz can spend the rest of the time. You have to assess the T seventy two, climb up on the on there, and then collect the AGS rounds. So I'll just for tell the, you for the VM, for the VMP. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it has uh, the AGS rounds. Also, though, you um, did you get a look? Diaz got a look at the hind. I think right, Amy. Oh yes. So she likes the hind too. The Diaz said that the hind has a has an AGS seventeen on it too. So you know the Very the, for, sexy the Ford helicopter. The Ford Cannon has like the. 12.7 millimeter Gatlin gun and mm -hmm. then it has a grenade launcher in that first thing. Um, yeah. And then it had a, it looked like it had a, a door mounted gun as well. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have the, so instead of the cannon, it, the auto cannon has a AGS and the 12.7 in the little ball turret in the front. Okay. So you guys do that. Um, let's see, Rupert, what do you want to do for the rest of the shift? Vince? Vince? You're probably muted. Keep hitting the desk, the Discord on, push to click instead of the Zoom one. Oh, funny. <laughs> um, for, so this is the morning shift now, correct? Uh, no, we're still night shift. We're finishing so because she was because you still have like halfway, only halfway through the night shift. Okay. So if you so do something that's... that takes a shift of work, you'll you'll be done in the mid morning. But like collecting, you know, you see, well, you start seeing Diaz gets out of the BMP, and is gonna sit on the BMP and get you know make sure that like these prisoners are rounded up. They're not gonna do anything. But all the yeah. militia have them rounded up, pretty much. If Maybe put anything... them. All, you want to put them all in the tarmac. If you can mm -hmm. Get them all up here. Yeah. yeah. Get them all grouped together. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and see if I can scavenge for parts either from the plane. Actually, I'll see if I can scavenge parts from. <laughs> Because this one's not completely blown up, right? It's just decommissioned. Uh, the BTR, yeah, and actually, you could check the. There's probably, I mean, there was no ammo cookoff, so you could probably try to get the ammunition from the BTRs. Yeah, I'll try to, to do, do that, that and scavenge parts to fix my uh my vehicle as well, since my radio is broken. Okay, uh, fixing the vehicle is probably fixing the radio is probably gonna be like a shift work. Yes, but I'm gonna try to get parts to help out with that. Okay, you can make a scavenging. I mean, you could you could easily take the ammo, uh, but you know, for the radio, just make a um, spare parts. So scaven survival roll scavenging. Survival. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Nice. Hey. Yay. You're able to scrounge parts together to fix the radio, which is cool. And then uh, if you, sh I'll show you here. Um, you have um, from the BTR. The BTR has like just KPV rounds, right? Because it just had KPVs. So you collect mm -hmm. 50 cap. Well, there another these right here that I'm highlighting, which you can't see. Um, <laughs> the BTR had one BTR had 165 rounds, and the other BTR had 150 rounds. <clears throat> okay. And then since I'm here, 
Um, Bronson, you and Diaz collect 60, 60 and 55 rounds uh, from the AGS up there. You can bring down an, the AGS if you want to. You have a couple of AGS now if you want. And then between that and then what you, you look through the hangar and you find uh, 155, 60 rounds and 55 rounds of AGS ammo. It's on the handout. It's at the bottom there. Um, you also find a case of RPG 16s in the hangar. <laughs> so for um, oh, how many is it? it? Says six, I think. That's gonna be handy. Um, yes. Oh, the missiles would be wonderful in the hangar. No. So you find four RPGs, but only six, six actual rockets. down there towards the bottom, right above the AGS. And then... Bless you. Thank you. And then, um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, Aldona, you want to be doing anything during the shift? Um... I think I might like to just kind of walk around and check to see if there's any other individuals that haven't been checked and see if they're alive or dead. If they're needed medical, sort them off to a group. Okay. Um, there's a whole bunch of people over here. I mean. Okay. I guess we could start with the. I think Amy kind of like stab the guy in the back of the neck and the in the back. He is dead. He's, He's very dead. dead. He's dead. Yeah, so go ahead and roll medical, Aldona. Okay. Zero proficiency. Okay. Yeah, you're able to let's see what their these person's wound looks like. It is a wound to the chest that um or wound to the chest. So you could drag someone out that's gonna require like a shift okay. of medical treatment on him. All right. But do you have you don't have medical? Do you have a med kit, I guess? Uh let me see. Gear. Yes, I do have a personal med kit. Okay. So you can you get a dice bump, so it's gonna be Empathy, and then move that one dice up to a D, I guess, under temporarily. Med aid, would be like your yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so, so able to proud of Aldona. Yeah. So let me see what this guy's. There's a four, four wound. I don't know if that's a shift or. A... Is a bleeding gut, so you're able to stabilize him. This guy's got another prisoner up here. Can't save everyone, but at least you save one person. Okay. Um. Yeah. And it, well, do you want to keep the hangers free because there's a bunch of stuff in there too, you know. So. You have to put them somewhere. Yeah. All right. So I did. Um, I think the rest of the time, people can take inventory, whether it's NPCs or whatever, and you you can see what you guys got. Uh, a lot of AK-74s, so I guess Aldona, one of the militia guys, comes over and gives you an AK-74. Um, there's tons of rounds, as you can see, thousands of rounds. Of, those are very prevalent, these AK-74 and AKR rounds, which is, I think, the uh, same thing. <laughs> So you find a lot of guns, um, like 15 and 16, 30, 31 guns, um, a ton of ammo. So I guess I, for our listeners, I'll calculate it up if you would like me to. So so, so this is like the, with the AK-74 and AKR, this, is it the same ammo 
Do you remember, Gabe? Um, that that's the 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 same weapons we gave to the militia. Yeah, seventy fours are like the seventy fours is five five four five. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, AKR I believe is the carbine version of that. Last time we gave them eight AKRs with three hundred and eighty rounds. Yep. That's less than 50 rounds for AKR. Yeah. I thought the AKR was a carbine version. Yep. Of the AK-74. So if you'd rather have a carbine version you could take that instead, Cindy. I don't know. Or the a regular assault rifle. It's plenty. I think I'm good with the one that I have. It was a gift. Mm -hmm. you, you never uh, re-gift it in front of someone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to find out how much because they did sometimes they did fire some a little bit. So you guys have 2,640 rounds of 545 more saw packed ammo. Yeah. But whether you want to give that stuff away, even as trades, a lot. It is yet to be seen. And then, um, like I said to Diaz and Ronson, right? The, you find a lot of AGS 17, the 30 millimeter grenade stuff in the hangers as well. Uh, there are spare parts for the hind. You find you see two rocket launcher mounts um, with some missiles, but uh, Diaz, you get a count. There's like only 16 heat missiles, so you can't even you can fill one pod or two pods halfway. And then you find uh, two 9M17 Flaytas, so then there's the wingtip missile racks and two missiles. So you have two like equivalent of ATGM tow missiles, anti tank. <laughs> but uh, you know, heavy weapons especially are scarce, so you know. A lot of a lot of missiles and all that kind of stuff were were blown, you know, in the early days of the war. It seems like there's plenty of like bullet ammo all everywhere, but not a lot of uh, heavy weapon ammo. <laughs> so that's why, like, uh, the Baron getting the howitzer are so dangerous. All right, so you guys have oh the um yeah, there's RPK stuff too. <laughs> Uh, 630 rounds of RPK ammo, that's 762 um, by 39 ammo, which also works in an AKM or AK-47. So. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I guess that's uh, the rest of the night shift. So now we'll jump to unless anyone can think of anything they want to do. You triage these people, you're treating them. Um, Kylie and Kasha are done by like mid morning with these guys. So I guess Kasha we... would like to put the more injured into a building because it's going to get cold. She yeah. wants to make sure that they can be secure. Okay. And she will ask Volkov to not go in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess some of the so the Minsk. So what do you guys do with the like the dead? Well, we can have bonfire, seen rude, but heat source. Strip the bodies of what can be used. Yeah. Take dog tags sent back to families. Man, there's a lot of there's a lot of prisoners that you guys are. Stuffing into the hangar here. They came out of there, they go back in there. Yep. So you're putting them into like one hangar, moving the equipment to the other hangar. Um, yep. So the ones that are critical, so actually, so one of them. 
So you can move them to like this building here, Amy. Okay. No, they moved back. Oh, these guys are here. So you guys have like, you're saving two right here and then Aldona's saving one. Yes, I cannot move them. Yeah. So you guys are all in here, treating the severely wounded. Now we can count up how many prisoners we have. A lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 17 and... prisoners. No, no, yes, that, that seems right. Well, 20 prisoners. And even 20 because you're saving three of them. Yes. You know, we like even numbers. 19 are Nineteen, well, twenty are dead too. I guess <laughs> you include the the, the leader. Okay, uh, so second shift, or right, sorry, this would be morning shift. Although again, Kylie, uh, Kylie Aldona and Kasha only get half of the morning shift. So, what else you guys want to do? This RPK is up here. Kashia wants Volkov to still come and help. He caused problem. He need to come help. Plus, she wants to talk to him while she works. Okay, uh, he'll come over. I guess his guys are gonna move in. Well, I have these guys stay here at the front. Where did he go? To Volkov? Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so you, would, you want to talk to him? Anything of important? Well, she wants to talk to him about having plans for future. Because I don't plan so much. I used to not plan. But then KGB came into my home. And they torture, murder father in front of mother, then murder my mother in front of me. And then only plan was vengeance, right? Right, Volkov? That's where you are at, too? Because we've all lost a lot of people in this war. We have, I'm sure, but... I'm sure my family's dead, too, somewhere. Either. But wouldn't you rather start over, have purpose, be good guy instead? I am a good guy. I wish you vengeance would act a, like good guy. Vengeance is a is a quality that is respected. Not anymore. Look what a vengeance has got in our world. We are all fighting somebody else's war that we did not want a part of. I want you to be part of our group. Keep us safe. I think it'd be good for you. Back in Krakow, I have lots of plans you can help with. <laughs> Along with that sexy helicopter of yours, and then you could ride around in our sexy little tank. We have lots of fun protecting Krakow. Krakow is so far south. Ah, but it is better weather. <laughs> it's the same weather. Well, you just have to think about it. Because I'll think about it. Please, I beg of you. Well, we just took this airfield. Yes, but you only wanted airfield for little parts for Hein. We have places you can put Hein and crack out. Think about it. Like I said, I'll think about it. Please do. Right. I will make it worth your while. Give you apartment. Give you purpose. You can help run. I'd like, I'd like to start Poland over to Glory Days. You can help me do it. Wouldn't that make you happy? It's no, because I'm Russian. So am I. Russians are never half. happy. Half, you said. I am half Russian. He said, like I said, I'll think about it. <laughs> what can I do to change your mind? But it's just a yes. Well, since you've taken the airfield and now you want to borrow my helicopter to take care of this Black Baron, maybe we take care of the Black Baron first and then we'll see. Because what if what if I'd rather stay in Warsaw and take over and be a 
more benevolent Black Baron? We could think about it. Then we could be allies. Yeah, your group is pretty efficient. <laughs> but I think you love maybe, Krakow when you see it. Maybe your little your group could be my my uh ground my ground uh, assault team. Nor you could be mine. Mm -hmm. Yes, we friends, right? Maybe. I make good borscht. He starts laughing. <laughs> Why do you laugh at my borscht? You know, that's not funny. Rupert not laughing, but also Rupert not in here. But he says, uh he says he, well, I was just thinking the last time I had borscht. It's been a while. Ah, we get back to <laughs> Krakow. I make you a nice meal. All right. Um all right, Aldona, you're listening in on this conversation. I don't know if you want to add anything or say anything or just kill the guy. Uh, a preference would be just to kill him, but she seems to want him alive, so. I'll just shake my head and laugh. Okay. Florian's also very you quiet. You laugh at my bush, too, but bush so good. It just seems like an odd bargaining chip, but that's all. If you are Russian, it's not bad bargaining. So good. Uh, is this another prisoner? <laughs> another prisoner. There's so many. Oh That's yeah, no, another you... dead guy. <laughs> right. right there on the field. All right. So, how are you going to take care of the dead? Or are you just going to? I guess that's a question. I would think bonfire best. Otherwise, look at all the graves we have to to dig. Or a one big trench, but you don't have a. All right. So you want to? Someone want to convince the militia to do that, or are our PCs or part of the group going to do it? Supervise that. I can try convincing the militia. Okay. We are not there. <laughs> well, I mean, you can. Uh, you can. Uh, Ronson last time convinced the the militia to come with us with uh, these guys here. Yeah. Yeah, with, with some guns and ammo, so I'm gonna try to okay do that again. Okay. You have so many guns, <laughs> so much ammo. Diaz would like to try giving them a command. All right. Well, Ronson, Ronson wants to try first, right? <clears throat> Can she roll to help him? Yeah, if you do that, then just bump up a dice, um, Gabe. And since you're offering all that stuff, I'll get bumped up another dice. So bump two dice up. Uh, kind of that would be that would be what persuasion? Yeah, persuasion or command uh, or command. Oh, command! I can. I have a D on command. So there, you can move that up to a B. With your plus your empathy, right? To a B, okay. Yep. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, yeah, no problem. They'll they go. Oh well, I guess. Uh, well, so you said you'd rather burn them than um dig a trench. I just think it's more efficient. Oh, we 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 spend in uh fuel. That's a that's a. So they can they can dig a trench, yeah. Oh, dig a trench, okay. That take long time. Yeah, that's the shift of work. It's a shift. It's the same shift we are. Yeah. Doing well, stuff. this is now the morning shift, right? Yeah. Okay. So have them dig a trench. Or we can put the prisoners to dig a trench also. Maybe. Oh right! Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, brutal. let's put the prisoners to dig a trench, and the, the and the Minx militia will supervise them. Okay. It All sounds right. like what we did at McDonald's. Pretty much. But in the rain. And we can give them some some AK AKRs and some and some more ammo. Okay. I don't know why it's giving me a hard time with this.
now that Ronson is a sergeant, he yeah. So there's like <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, so that yeah, so these so some not all the prisoners. You don't have to get all the prisoners. I mean, no, 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 not all. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. So the militia will supervise. All right, okay. Um, Rupert, and oh, so then that doesn't take anything else. Diaz and Ronson want to do this morning shift. Uh, Diaz would like to go over to Rupert's vehicle and start working on the radio. Okay. You found parts? Yes, he did. Okay. You need tech roll? Yeah, that'll be the shift. Nah, she's not doing anything else. Yep, cool. Your yeah, radio's fixed. She then... expects Yay. German, she wants German <laughs> sausages with sauerkraut out of, out of uh, Rupert now. Probably the last time you had sauerkraut and a good brat. Can't remember. Just, Ru Rupert just smiles awkwardly and kind of like rubs his head. And then you just see him kind of eye uh, <laughs> Virgil and be like, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, always uh, have an you wanna... sauerkraut. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah, Gabe just commented. Kasha says, Volkov, I trade you Hilo for Borscht. That's funny. All right. Um... Bronson, are you going to do anything? Uh, shift. I mean, unless you want to help, you're helping to supervise. The, you could actually rest. Remember, rest, you guys have not rested. You need to yeah. rest at least four hours or a shift. Yes, once once Kasha is done, she wants to clean up because I'm assuming she's very bloody. Yeah, you'll be done mid morning. And she'd like to lay down there's bedrolls okay. near where the bathroom is because she found the bathroom. Right. Sleep. Okay. I'm assuming Ren will watch. Not watch her sleep, but you know what I mean. He yeah. <laughs> sure. Or sleep himself. He might want to sleep too. Yeah. So it's there's. Up. These guys develop, I guess, uh, the Marines. Let's put Chernov with the Marines now. We'll figure out a, a rotation schedule so two are two are on and two to rest <laughs> as they collect all the guns and ammo and pile them up. <clears throat> and then um, by mid morning, the Howitzer crew and then the all those other guys. I guess I'm gonna go grab them from the McDonald's. If I can grab them all easily. I already have Kostovsky. If you thought that there was a lot of stuff, Cindy, already, well. Wait till you see the leaf. All right. There's a Howard to, the Howard to crew. The horses. And the horses. But with Kostovsky, they come um, where you want them to set up. Uh, probably the lawn at the bottom near the plane. Lots of grass for horses down here. Okay. If you think that's best. Yeah, maybe at the edge of the woods. I'm down here. Okay, and then <clears throat> the other guys. <laughs> Um, arrived to with the ambulance. Um, I can find him. Oh, yeah, the ambulance. That's right. Never leave home without it, like American Express card. Mm -hmm. I'll get the ambulance in a sec. These are all in different places, so I gotta. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's the oops. I think it's taking longer for people to get from mints because they are all eating burgers at McDonald's. Maybe, yep. So they these guys have brought bring egg uh... McMuffin. 
Let's see this guy's yeah, put me here. Although they want to, they do want to bring in the um. They do want to bring the, the helicopter. You know, so there's like, there's a Zill towing the helicopter, and then the tanker truck. Uh, the tanker truck's gonna pull over to here, and uh, yeah. They definitely want to get this to the hangar, and then these guys wandering around. So the ones with the black dots are the bad guys, just FYI. Or with the red dots are the bad guys. And the ones, the Soviets with the, that don't have a mark on them are Volkov's people. But you'll also see, I'll show you. The Volkov's dudes are like, yeah, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them in these two X, these other two BTRs. So they'll camp out here. <laughs> um, and then we need to, the the uh, the other thing. The helo, helo right. already there. Hel helicopter's already there. But um, the ambulance. The ambulance, and then the. Tanker the fuel. Yeah, it's there. Sure. Tanker's right here. And the Rupert cannot blow that up either. No yep. blowing that up. No problem. Yeah, these guys here. Tanker guy. Not yet. There's always the a dog. And the driver. Maybe. And then um, the pilot, and then one of their mechanics, and the driver. <laughs> okay. Uh, you do learn that the. Um, one of these people either to probably tells Rupert's the closest, so they'll let Rupert know that like the tanker comes and assesses how much fuel is in the in these tanks in here, and he tells you that uh, we have close to two thousand liters of fuel, two hundred thousand liters of fuel. The left tank has forty one percent, and the right tank has sixty one percent. He probably he also says this is probably the last AV gas, at least. In this region, <laughs> it kind of brags about that seat because we took the last AV gas. It's a very important, very important. It doesn't come back, it says. <laughs> so, all right, uh, Rupert. So, Ron, oh, Ronson, did you see you're resting the ship this uh morning shift? <laughs> yeah, he was resting the morning shift. Yes, okay, and Diaz is helping with the radio. Rupert, uh, what do you want to do? Rupert would uh him and Virgil will try to work on the hole and then I'll get uh what well, the patch job onto the tank okay. while the rest of the crew will rest. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead and give me a tech roll and you can bump it up because you get help from the NPC. <laughs> nice. Oh, very nice. Cool. So I think I don't know if you if your was your gun, did your gun get like Messed up also. You're... Yes, I think the machine gun that was on top did. The reliability, I believe, was affected. Yeah, I think Volkov's tanker has like one, like probably a thousand kilograms of fuel, like one reload for the hind. Nice. But the hind doesn't have any fuel in it right now. So, because they didn't want to transport it. And then if it got hit, it goes kaboom. So, all the fuel is in the tanker. This is okay. They can put it in helicopter. Make it easier. Yeah. To leave. Yeah. So they'll probably work. They want to start working on the repairs on the hind. Um, at some point, uh, Vlad comes over to where you guys are, and he kind of gives you like the list of the assets of what you guys have, <clears throat> the spare parts, which is great. He's very happy that there's spare parts. He says we only have. Two rocket launcher mounts and only sixteen missiles, Captain. Um, and then, but this, but we have two flatas, two flatas. Those are good for intimidating. <laughs> we only shoot if necessary. Maybe at Baron House, 
after we well, find out who else is in there. I guess you also learn, let's see, from these guys. Because I mean, in theory, in theory, you're like interrogating these guys as you go. As I well. am hoping to. Yeah, you interrogate. I mean, so really, the um, I believe this is the only armor that the Baron has. These two BTRs and the T seventy two. No, fifty two be Baron then. <laughs> um. Do they know about the big convoy that they sent out? Do they have any information on that one? Yeah, they said it should be he should be here soon, and we were to as soon as he was going he was going to send us a message, and as soon as um as soon as the convoy was there, we were to hit Minsk Makavik Makaviki. As and soon as the convoy was there, we're back in Warsaw. So where are they now? Because I don't know. I think you do know. I have no problem removing a few fingers to get information. I saw them back on later. I don't know if the Baron has a T-80. Um, do you know which way they went? Yeah, I'll get to that. I'll answer one question at a time. I know he has he has big gun pellets are like we do, but I do not think he has any bullets. Not a lot. No. There it is. Okay. Um <laughs> oh yes, he does have um yes, the Baron's the Black Guard has a T eighty and then a lot of uh, several BMPs. But some of those BMPs went on the uh, expedition. The, the T-80 did not go, but the, some of those BMPs went on the expedition for the uh, Baron's the Baron's Black Guard Army <laughs> or Black Guard Division, the, whatever, company. For the convoy? Yeah. Do they know what all was in the convoy? Yeah, um, I'll get there. Yeah, the convoy was a black communities from the Black Guard, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six BMPs, two what half ton trucks and one five ton truck. <clears throat> There's also another platoon of an OT sixty four as well. So two half ton trucks. How many other truck? Uh, I'll do it. Put it in here in the chat. When it says BG, it's a BMP. Okay. I think. Let me look. Let me see if they what they got. What they look like. Do they put like in the uh, in the older version? They were very much about the minutia, and this is the the type of BMP, and they always make it complex. Um, they most likely BMP too. Oh wait, um, BGP. Oh okay, okay. Um, it might be um, different groups. Hold on. So he's going to tell you, so, or one of the guys tells you, he doesn't know which Black Guard unit they are, but one has a, um, uh, it's a BMPC. That's a three-man, three-man crew. Um... Also, there's actually an M113. So do we? Um, C is a, nope, it's 20. 
30. Oops. And then I said that the trucks, right? Two we'll half ton trucks. So one half ton truck each one? No, there's like two what half ton trucks. Um and one five ton a five ton truck, like a big truck. <laughs> They're probably like the two and a half ton trucks and the big truck are carrying men as well. And there is also there's also an OT sixty four. Which is another like a kind of similar to the spot Panzer looks. So BMPC and M113, 40, about 40 troops. But these are all spread out, right? Between the two and a half ton truck, the five ton truck, and the all the vehicles. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So to because I mean if they all walked, it'd take forever. But BMPs can hold like seven, M113 can hold like 12. The two and a half ton trucks can hold, you know, probably like 12 each. And then the one ton truck was probably for all the, the stuff that they were gonna get. Or I could hold troops in it too. Have to figure out what the disposition is. And when did they leave? That would be nice to know. Yeah, so there were six BM BMPs or just one? No, one BMP. Oh, or but the Baron the Baron has does have a he they, it does have a T eighty. And he does have other BMPs, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, probably like three or four more, maybe. Um, let's see. Do you want that answer first? I would like to know when they left. Yeah. The BMPs, I'm right here. So he has one, two, three. War. He only has three other BMPs and a T-80. But those are back at the the, the tower, right? And then, and then when do they leave? <laughs> they probably left... About when to... While we're looking this up, our viewers can yep. like, comment, and share the video and subscribe. Probably like six days ago. Six days. They're probably on their way back. <laughs> so they must be close to Bug River now. Probably. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, what do you want to do this next? 
when we sleep, right? So now we are afternoon shift. Yeah, unless someone else is doing something this morning. Yeah, because Rupert, Rupert and Diaz fixing the Spa Panzer. So it gives you an idea. Two, three, four. Three, four. I'm just counting. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I don't know. Um, you want them to get working on it right away? Yes. I'm Is assuming it? they started yeah. as soon as helicopter got there. Yeah. Um, I guess Sam wasn't at the McDonald's. He should have been. Did we leave him at the old McDonald's? But he should be there. Oh, there he is. That's right, because he was with... Um... Leo should be there, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these guys here. So, okay. Might be good to take a little break and you get something to drink. And then we can see what we're doing in the afternoon shift. I think this guy's, cool. this guy's good. This guy. Okay. Yeah, just take like a five minute break. Excuse me. So usually there's more action, but uh, there's a lot of consolidation right now for our listeners, but uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So we wanted to have Sam help the mechanics and stuff uh, fix the the choppa. And the tanker is going to come to refuel this guy. I guess I gotta drag everything onto the tarmac and easier. All right, so yeah, let's roll for Sam. For Sam, Sam's here. Um, for tech. Yeah. Okay. I give him a bonus. Is he gonna take the lead, or is he just aiding? Um, he gets a plus one, which we give him an A in tech. Oh wow. Okay. So. Probably taking the lead. Okay. Unless he rolls poorly. <clears throat> well, he did. He rolled roll. an 11. That's yeah. not too bad. Okay. So that was... All right. So that's to fix with the spare parts. I'm going to remove that. Um, right. So Sam's going to help with that. And then, um, all right. So, do you do you want to arm or put the other stuff on there, like yes, the two missile pods, and then the yep. yes. Kasha says if we have gun. it, it on the helicopter. Why not make it very pretty? Ronson like can theory. help do that. Yeah, Ronson can help with uh, with loading the missile, so that heavy okay weapon related stuff. Cool. So tech. Uh, but he's got heavy weapons, right? So, so you can do that, and then a pilot will tell you how to what to do, or it could give you a bonus dice. So if you have, do you have um, like a I don't know what specialty that that relates to fixing weapons or something. Combat engineer, is that what that is? That would be uh, gunsmith. Do you have gunsmith specialty? You mean uh, Ronson? Yeah. Uh, no, he's a 
No, no specialty. Machine gunner. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll just give him a... He has, does he have tech? Tech? No. No. Okay. Well, Maybe you like... Like 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 those five in XP and put a D in tech. <laughs> <laughs> You could, but I probably think maybe intelligence and heavy weapons might be the way to go. Since and you're Diaz familiar can, with heavy weapons and all that Diaz stuff. Diaz can help if she's the right Diaz has helped. Diaz is her buddy. She has an A. Diaz is fixing the Spa Panzer Lux's radio this shift. Oh. So Yo, do you like intelligence? You in do you intelligence and heavy weapons, Gabe? Intelligence? Okay. Yeah. Intelligence. And heavy weapon. Well, I'll put that together. You're like, oh, okay. Oh no. Would you like to push that? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Don't drop the rockets. <laughs> next to the next to the fuel. Yeah. <laughs> next to the tanker. <laughs> right. Right. Rupert right. like to do that, not Ronson. Ronson okay. go get him some, not boom boom. So, <laughs> yeah. I reward wow. both of them, right? Like yeah, yeah. Like yeah you can, you can reroll. You can reroll both. Yep. Delicious. Okay, that's much better. Well, I said like a eight because we're ignoring the D twelve right second time. So like I was gonna have you use like your intelligence plus your heavy weapons, right? So. So he's a bit stressed. No, you didn't. No, <laughs> no? you didn't get a oh, okay. one. So you made it. So uh, so yes, yeah, so you're able to load it all up um, nice. as best you can. Um, reload the ammo, like load up the what? What did I say? It was twelve point seven millimeter? Because you got a ton of that ammo, right? From the mm -hmm. from the KPVs, from the BTRs. Um, yep. And do we have any fifty caliber? And do you want to use any AGS? Oh yeah, you have plenty of KP. All the all the KPV ammo from that were on the BTRs. It's the same. Is that fifty caliber? Yeah, it's the same as. For because the that will fit in Gatling gun in front of Hein. Yeah, that's that's what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. I so how how many rounds do you want to fill it up? I guess the capacity. Capacity is a lot. Uh. 1,470 rounds. Four, you have, well, we don't have that much, I guess. Yeah, you have 165 plus 150. Go big or go home, like living in Texas. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's lo load everything on there. What would that be equivalent of, like a, a second of ammo? or Yeah, something like that, <laughs> like a couple of bursts. Right. Yeah, oh, the rate of fire is eight. The rate of fire is eight on this, so yeah, it would be yeah. maybe at 30 seconds. It's enough to take one out. We can put in each a one and then we play Russian roulette with the Gatling gun with people. That's always fun. I, I don't think it works that way. Turn into what? a drinking game. Lots of fun. Just just put a thing on it that says use on emergencies only. <laughs> All right. So how about the um AGS? The capacity for the grenade launcher is 29. And you guys have 60 plus 55. Might as well. Yeah. Load it up. Yeah, load, load it up. It up. All right. So then that's that leaves um 26 and 60, 86. Yeah, 80, 86 for your, the BMP. For the, for the BMP, yep. Okay. Are you going to take any of these, these bipods? Unless we, we, yeah, unless we get the IGS uh, launchers. Anyone want an AGS launcher? It could be fun for Rupert to play with. I would not be opposed. All right. Yes, yeah, so you can grab an AGS. There's like there's a lot of ammo for one for these AGSs. 
Not just that. I can use that for makeshift IEDs and other stuff, too. So does Donna <laughs> want one? I don't know want one. I mean, we are handing things out. You haven't asked for anything. She's got her AK-74. She can have others. Yeah. I mean, there's so much ammo for this. Okay. Um. All right. So you can figure out how to load it up uh, when we get to that. Oh, there's also the PKB, so 762. 54 ammo for the PKB. So you can use all the RPK stuff <laughs> ammo. So the door gun's going to be loaded as well. There's 600, 630 rounds of PK ammo. Is that enough to make points? Yeah, the magazine's 100. So, all right. Well, you can figure out how to load it up given the airfield assets that you have that I put on there. Um, so uh, anyway, we so like have, it's after. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, we still have like uh, after loading the the helicopter with the AGS mm -hmm. ammo, we still have like three belts. So I give two to Rupert and keep one for the for the BMP. Okay, for the AGS. Uh, yeah, the AGS. The yeah. the feed system is. Uh, 29 grenade belts. So yeah, it's a belt. There's enough. Cool. Yeah, I think um are you gonna share this with Volkov or or anything? Volkov, which little, just little bits the here and there. Helicopter. But... Yeah. We just what? Oh you just loaded it out. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true, that's true. <clears throat> what about the other well, I think the Marines are gonna keep this RPK. Okay. So take they'll, they'll take 100 rounds of that. So that's 230 rounds uh, left. So you can fill up the PKB. Well, sorry, no, it's more than that, right? It's, um well, 630 rounds. So you have 530 rounds. So I don't know if anyone wants this other RPK. Maybe the militia. Because they still have to go back because she wants to give them special tasks. What about the BMP? Because the BMP doesn't have any ammo in their gun, right? Does a BMP have ammo on their coaxial? Well, I'm going to say, well, didn't we take an, uh, the EGS ammo from, or yeah. the 50 cal ammo? From he already the loaded it up. Yeah, but we can give them the RPK since they gave up the ammo for that. Who, the Russians or the militia? Uh, probably. Mm. Neither sure neither of whom did about. anything, just FYI. Yeah, to one of them, whoever, I guess, gave up their ammo for the helicopter. And then, I'm, I'm fine with either or of them. I, preferably, I like to give it to the person who gave it out, uh, to the group that gave up the 50 cal ammo for the helicopter. Um, no one, because there's so much ammo in here. Oh, okay. In that case, I'm fine with giving it to one of them. I'll let the rest of the group decide. But the militia will need it if they are going to help us fight the Baron as well. I think Volkov, he have pretty helicopter with lots of things that go boom boom. Let the militia have some. Well, that's, yeah, we can. The militia can take it because they're gonna. They're, in theory, they're going with you, right? To now that you know that there's like 40, 40 troops. Um. They could take. They could use the RPK in a, in a squad, another squad uh, support AGS. So, and they're gonna go with you, right? So, uh, seven can jump into the BMP. But can first, somebody, uh, curiously, yeah, can yeah. somebody use radio call Minsk see if they can house our prisoners while we take care of convoy? Yeah, I can radio them up. I have that. Yeah, well, the Minsk, the Minsk guys are here. There's can they them. take them back, put them in jail there? There's a um, couple of them. Well, I could have Turnoff and the Marines and Grunts do that. Yeah. If you want. Yeah. Take the prisoners back to Minsk with the. Um, Uh, 
I think that's good place for them because if we leave airfield, we then we have to leave somebody here. Oh, I mean the Volkov's guys will stay back here. Just the helicopter is going right. Maybe. So you have like fourteen troops with the with their BTRs staying back. Unless you want, and then what about the M one thirteen? Are we going? Are you taking that with? I would think we need the firepower <sighs> doing that. Well, we can discuss it maybe over dinner. Okay. Yeah. So um. So you probably learned that they're on their way back. I don't know if there are any other questions you have for these prisoners. Um, so the Minsk militia and the Marines are going to take all these guys back. Well, before they go, Kasha wants to know where they keep the Marines and the Baron's place. Are they on different floors at the bottom? Where are they? In the dungeon, you say. In the dungeon? Mm -hmm. And are they the only ones that are shall we say, conscripted to be there? He says sometimes the Baron takes prisoners of um, the other little groups, the people from the other groups in in Poland. Are they all in the dungeon, as you call it? So here's a, like this um, handout. Oh, you don't see that. So this here, I'll show everyone. So he has people from... Um, I think Praga and there's another place. Kamionek, I believe. He has people that, you know, prisoners from there, so they'll comply. And they are all in the in the dungeon? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You may go, but you do not get any chicken nuggets while you are in Minsk. They didn't know there are chicken nuggets in Minsk. You should have been better people. You would have had chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they seem excited. No, they don't get nuggets. any. They don't get bored either. Right, so I guess we're... So after that, we're like after mid-afternoon shift. Everyone's kind of been working really hard. Some people have rested. Bronson, you know, Bronson, I guess you're here. Um, so then like the... The Siliesh militia, uh, um, Andrej, he kind of goes, uh, goes up to Florian, and he goes, "Oh, hey, I forgot. Well, the battle, you know, and everything going on, so busy. Um, mm. Probably, oh, probably these guys, these three guys here, you have, they have to stay with you, the ones who you triaged and are stabilized, Amy. Mm -hmm. So those guys. So then." Andre, she pulls out of his pack and amazingly, well, because they didn't get shot at at all. He pulls out of his pack a soccer ball. Oh, he put the ball? Yeah, and he kind of tosses it to Florian who kind of stops it. He still got his, like, boots on and his, you know, SVD rifle. Because um, we should play a game, he says. Right. Kasha will tell him, you have to take your shoes off and put your gun down before you do that, young man. And then Andre says, how about us versus them? Pointing, okay. pointing at the Russians. What do you say to that, Volkov? Volkov. Do you, do you want to play little football? For fun or for something? If we win, you come help me in Krakow. And if I win? If you win, I do not take your helicopter permanently. Just borrow. You're not going to get the helicopter permanently, he says, narrowing his eyes. No. Because but if, I, if I win... But the woman always gets what she wants, Volkov. If I win, then you, you, your free Krakow coalition stays here for a while and helps me out. Mm. Whether we no base here one. and base here in the airfield no or work on warsaw no you have to pick something else i pick something else too if you need me to Krakow's, how about this crack a long way if you win i buy you chicken nuggets from mcdonald's i don't think That's that exists 
that's that's low stakes. You want me to pick up and move all my guys down into Krakow, which I hear is like a hotbed of intrigue. I have to deal with KGB, whom I hate. No, we've killed so many, but then there's some left. You can kill them. Oh. But I tell you what, I win. You come, you come to Krakow. I make you borsch. You that... stay in the apartment. I make you borsch. You still haven't given me. He kind of does a finger point because he's like a finger pointer guy. He like points at your finger. And goes, well, I haven't. You haven't told me what I win. Borsch. I win. If you win, you get Bush. That's and you get great big hug from me. He's like scale, scale. If I win, you stay here and help me consolidate our airfield and our holdings. I told you there was a power plant. We could make it great out here. But I have feeling if I'm gone from Krakow too long, Krakow get get in trouble. Well, then you You're not north. in trouble here once we take out the Baron. Well, then we stake out our claim up here. How about if we just play for fun? All right. He goes, okay. But he, he looks at the... Because I hope you have a good team. The Polish hasn't had a good soccer team since or football team since the 90s, the early 90s. That is because we invaded them. All right. So obviously there's you don't have any goalposts. So like on I feel like Andre's just like excited. He's he kind of tell, talks to the militia. Um so it's gonna be like 10 on 10 with cones. Well, people get helmets and put the helmets down as cones. Um so I know I have my 10 guys. So I don't know how many how many PCs want to play. The way I'm gonna do this is like just to make a we're not going to go, you know, minute by minute, round by round. We're going to make mobility rolls, and whoever has the highest mobility total, successes total at the end, you know, ten versus ten wins the game. Well, so, Ren, Kasha, yeah. Diaz, that's three. Yeah, Diaz will play. She played, you know. She played so, in college. She yeah, and before she got talked drafted. about it many times. All right, Bronson. Is Bronson going to play? Does he have good mobility? He plays football. He doesn't play soccer. So. <laughs> he can like learn. He, you use your feet. Does he have a good mobility? I mean, that's the main thing. Uh, yeah, he. I just uh, how crazy he's. Rupert, football. are you gonna play? I mean, yeah, I can play. Okay. He, uh, Adona? C. Adona, C? Adona, you're new to yeah. the group. You should play. Okay, I'll, I'll play. <laughs> right, so I usually much... want to, I don't really play it. But I was a fan of Poland in the early 90s. And your friend Ren looks very familiar to me. He does, doesn't he? And, Andres, he... like, gives you, gives you like, a nod, like, a nod, Aldona. <laughs> um, let's see. How many, is, how many people is that? Because I can fill out with Polish militia. Three, but... four, five, six. Six people. Um, Cigna can play. That's seven. And Anna can play. That's eight. Eight. And then a couple Polish. Okay. Let's do it. I already have my guys. I have to roll for Volkov and then roll for... Volkov, of course, plays forward. Center forward. Ren always plays and the that pilot. Back. Him and the pilot are playing, you know, two for the playing uh forwards and people fill in, you know, the troops fill in. Um, so all right. So you want me to you want me to well let's let's uh flip a coin, heads or tails, and see who rolls first. You need Cassia. to know what, what positions we are playing. <clears throat> uh you can tell me what position we're you're playing. Because Ren and Kasha will play halfbacks. Diaz can probably be defender. Okay. Try right, Bronson Diaz defend. Bronson, then we can play the goalkeeper. There's no goalkeeper. No goalkeeper. It's just cones. Okay. It's just cones. But he can play defense. No, cones. Okay. Don't use your hands, he says. <laughs> Diaz says, don't use your hands. 
<laughs> guard, don't let anything get past the skull. All right. But she'll be back there as like a so you'd be like sweeper. She'll be center, center fullback or something. What do you want Aldona to play? And Rupert. I guess Rupert's gonna go as a striker. It goes up front, the goes forward. Front. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll go as Rupert. Okay. Strikers. Okay. I have a decent strength and agility, so it should work out. <laughs> Nice. Okay, cool. All right. So, you, oh, so let's roll, flip a coin to see who rolls first. Um, or so you can decide who. Like, if if I if you guys win, you can tell me to roll first, or you guys can roll first. You know, we'll see. All right. Uh, heads or tails. Heads. He All right. Uh, so one, two, three is heads. Four, five, six is tails. All right. Yep. Tails. It, it's fine. Okay, so I would like you guys to roll first, and then I gotta beat it. Okay, so I have to roll everybody's mobility. <clears throat> no, you just roll your mobility, and we'll start tallying it up. Okay, tell me so when. So it's a nice, it's a beautiful little respite from all the killing. Everyone's kind of <laughs> laughing and pretty happy about it. Volkov doesn't smile, really. He does, you know, the pilot is, is, ha is having a good time. You know, he does like a little bit of volleying, you know, with his with his feet, you know, and then um, kicks it over to Florian. Florian does this like rainbow move. Um, most people are playing, you know, barefoot. So, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll keep a tally, I guess. I guess if you're a striker and you, you succeed, you can say if you scored a goal or not, okay. or blocked a goal if you're in defense. All right. So, Aldona, it's got one. We got one. Can I push it? You can push. No. Nope. Oh, nope. Kasha gets uh, injury. It's one injury. That's okay. Kasha's tired. <laughs> she did not sleep much. Uh, you know, probably what happens is like Volkov like body checks her. Possibly. Oof. Volkov has problem with women. Okay. What? Florian, oh no. He will push. That is better. Okay, so Florian's got, you can't push that one the messed up dice. Oh. You have to push the D twelve. Okay, so just roll D twelve? Yeah. Ouch. Oof. We are going to lose game. Okay. Um, now you have to make borscht. <laughs> oh game. Nice. I only make borscht at home. All right, so I guess I guess Flor uh Florian is injured too. Oh uh, Diaz, nice. No, no, he is. And just... Rupert, nice. Rupert, he's, he's uh, I guess, yeah, it's a staunch defense back there. All right. So is that it for everyone? Oh, we got, uh, we got Anna and uh, and Cigna. Am I rolling for them too? I can roll for them. Anna, oh. hold on. Anna, Anna, Anna. Um, here's Anna. Oh dang! And Cigna scores. What is that? Oh, Cigna or Anna? That was... I rolled. You roll for Anna, and Cigna got two successes. That's one, two, three. Uh, that makes up for either Kasha or for yeah, Red. Florian and Flor Ka I mean, I guess, I guess Volkov, you know, and the other Russians, like you could hear him talking, whispering in Russian, <clears throat> and uh, you know, they um, they kind of mess up or mess with and trip up Kasha and Ren, um attempting to injure but the defense is very solid Cigna and Anna as if they played football many times before combo to get it to score a goal I guess Rupert and uh Rupert and Aldona combined to score a goal somehow too so they're doing pretty well uh I guess that's that's six right no eight so I need two so Andres of course is playing can't roll for Andre. I'll roll for Andre and one of the Polish soldiers um comes and plays too. Because you guys got a big team already. I don't know how to roll for the Polish. What did I get? I nope. no nothing from that one. And then Andre. Nice, Andre. 
All right. So you guys have like a total of eight successes. So now I'll roll for these guys. I got to beat eight. I don't know if I can beat it. Oh, no, there's no way I'm going to beat eight. Um, okay. And even Volko is not so great. Nope. I'm going to push it for him. All right. The pilot. Dash is going to say payback hurts because it's not Volko. Yeah, the pilot's pretty agile and jinky, as you'd expect. All right. And then these other Soviet guys. The good, see, the advantage is, of course, you guys are PCs and they're NPCs. Mm -hmm. So I got to roll, what is this? B? I got to roll a 90, 10 and see. Their agility is pretty good. Uh, what? Unrecognized command. Why is Volkov rolling again? He's not. All right, that's one. So, so far, I only have one success. That's one. One, two, three, four, five. All right. All right, so uh, so someone want to tell me how you guys win? Well, Kasha and Rin, they want the others in the team to be very um, excited. So they pass ball over to them. They get the goals. And I think I think I saw Signa on her knees gliding in the grass after getting the goal. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think uh Anna Anna gives uh Rupert and Aldona a high five. Signa gives you guys a Signa's pretty quiet, but uh, you know, she's very good. It seems like you like you said, she's your Alicia Lehman. She does great on the field. Um, she scores quite a few times. And then uh, I guess Volkov kind of looks at you, his hands on his hips, and he says, I guess you um I guess you just you should have taken that bet. I did not want to make a bet that you would lose. I thought we were friends. All right. Plus, so, I thought you would have it's, it's recognized. Very... Except for Volkov's antics, it's pretty friendly. Uh, <laughs> uh, the pilots like up there talking. They pull out some vodka stores, you know, that they have, and you know, share share around. Although you know, one needs to be stay frosty and be vigilant. Although I think no one feels that um, there's going to be a, any retaliation anytime soon. It was such a quick. Such a quick attack this morning, and Rupert was monitoring the communications, and they didn't. There was no like, Black Baron, Black Baron, come and save us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so say, um, so I'm gonna say, Polish, Polish plus FKC three, and Soviet troops zero. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So we we said that Cigna score, scored, so Rupert scored and Aldona scored also. Mm-hmm. Nice. On as good as a halfback with the assist. Ah. <laughs> All right, and then uh, Volkov is, you know, he like I say, he puts his hands on his hips. Maybe you're working at him, softening him up. Mm -hmm. Um, he says, "All right, what's next?" Then Kasha, of the Free Cap Krakow Coalition. Well, next is to take out the big convoy. But first, don't you want to say hello to Ren? You have sat, said words to him. I thought you knew who he was. I don't know. I mean, I don't follow Polish soccer. But Andres kind of steps up and goes, I know who I know him. They used to call him the saint. Yes, back indeed. before the war. Mm -hmm. That move, that move, Florian. Yes, Can I call you Florian? Better. It is. Because that war ruined a lot. Kind of Ren. Yeah. Ren looks like has it puts that distant stare and like he's looking off. You know? And then Andres just gives you the because Andres is from Warsaw. He just gives you the narration. He tells you that that Florian Filopowicz, the saint, 
he was going to be he played for he played he was he was on the the youth team for Liga Warsaw for a long time was going to play for Liga for La Liga, for Liga Warsaw or Legia Legia Warsaw but the damn war the damn war the damn war rained a lot for us let's get this baron so we can go back to better times we have a stadium by the way it's full of crops right now but maybe we could make it a pitch again i'm sure we could and we can build one in krakow too everybody wants us to stay here florian shrugs and he, she tells uh, kasha i'm sorry i almost killed you i i know it was just a mistake i did not recognize you okay magpie kind of laughs the first time you probably ever seen Ronson, you probably first time you've seen Florian laugh. Um, <laughs> the rest of the other two, you don't know that. I know about them. Um, I guess we we should we should play this game more often then. <laughs> what play? Yeah. What game? Oh, the football. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the so you know the the Soviets they pass, they go. Uh, I I would so one of the Soviets maybe the pilot comes up to you because you probably got a really good block. On one of his, you know, attempted goal, and he goes, "I thought you, I thought you only played American football." It's not that different. They told me not to use my hands. Because, because, well, maybe we should look around next time we're somewhere. I'm sure, I'm sure we can find a football, like a pigskin. You call it pigskin? He says it in Russian too. Pigskin. Like throw the throw the ball around. Throw the ball around. All we've been able to throw recently is grenades, right? Yes. Yeah. Do you see Volkov? It is fun to have friends. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So um, right. So I guess um, do you want to plan anything now, or just kind of call it, and then the next time you get moving back down to business after this brief respite. Probably next time get down to business. Okay. Yeah, so Kasia you know, will Kasia will tell Diaz, no, you may not call me Magpie, because Diaz would do such a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So um anyone else have any other comments or questions nope. or things that we might have missed doing? Uh, the game doesn't take that long, so you could do the planning during the evening shift. And if you guys are going nocturnal again like you did on this operation. That's Most probably likely. not a problem. I mean, the I think all the all the vehicles have um have like thermal imaging. Yes. So so um so you could travel at night. I don't know if you have to decide how what you're gonna or when you're gonna bring the helicopter in or what you're gonna use for it or hold it in reserve. I don't know. Um, and figure out what. what do Do we have a radio that could go far enough to reach helicopter? Um, you have your radio is probably, you know, twenty kilometers, and then for every success you get, it's an extra ten kilometers that you can so, twenty kilometers effectively, and then you make a tech roll to try to boost the signal. So, mm -hmm. so, so two hexes out. I mean, I don't know. Let's yeah, you know, we can maybe go to the um. Maybe as much as I want to keep helicopter hidden, maybe we do need to let it fly with us. Yeah, so you guys are here. Right. And then Kasha suspects that the convoy is crossing the bug already, which could be here, here, or here. But um, as long as they've been gone up here, makes the most sense. This, I think, would be further drive for them. Yeah, and then, you know, that they're unaffiliated marauders there. Uh, the Baron has control of Ostrov, Mazavika, Malkina. Um, I think one of these, one of the, guy, the guys, prisoners told you that it was a, there was a plan to take and hold that village. <clears throat> and then uh, Wizco, Jado, Wegro are all unaligned. Mm -hmm. So... Right, and that's actually ninety kilometers. And how long of a drive would that be? Um, if you go, let's see, 
I mean, in helicopter, very fast, 208 miles per hour. Yeah. But tank, yeah. I think quick. Um, I think it moves nine, right? 5072. Well, if you go if you go overland, it's a straight shot, 90 kilometers. If you take the roads, right? Oh, I should not no snapping, no snapping. Um, no snap to center. Right, so it's from here. about 117 kilometers if you go by the roads that are on here we can google map it and see if there are other roads like in between you know yes and see what I the... will work on yeah but, so. but these these areas are forest right yeah but there's a road right so yeah and it's really near the barrens so i uh, so you think maybe so yeah we could we will we will we don't want to risk any ambush in the forest. Yeah, it's about the yeah. same. Or you could go to here, you know, or you could just go here. You take the road to to the to the east. Yeah, like might be easier that way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thank you all for playing. I think we're going to call it here. Uh, after the victory against the Soviet troops in a friendly game of football. And uh, yeah, anyone want to say, have any last words? No, just Kasia gets out of making borscht tonight. Yeah, there are probably no ingredients for borscht. Not here. No, but I thought you said you weren't going to make it because you weren't even home. Yes, I only <laughs> make borscht at home. That's and funny. welcome, Maldona. Yep. Yeah, more there so generally we'll speaking more, more action uh next session. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> generally there's there's usually more action, right? The last session was all oh, gun, yeah. fight, gun fight. So uh, this is like a, a vehicle battle. Yep. So uh so next one, you know, we'll have to see how you I mean, I don't know. Like the the hind. Yeah. You have to decide. <laughs> I mean, you guys will have like 15, uh, you know, six, 15 troops from Siliesh with you as well. All right. So, yeah. and you have, and you have a T-72 that they don't, <clears throat> that they probably think is still the Black Barons, right? They think it is friendly. Yeah. They mm -hmm. might think it's friendly. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. And it is very fast. Great. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, Aldona, do you want to say anything? Cindy? Uh, just thank you for everyone being welcoming, and I look forward to it further on. Okay, great. All right, thank you, all my players, uh, Amy, Gabriel, Cindy, and Vince. And without further ado, good night and good morning. Best of luck.